Hello all YouTubers, I am the Weather Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for tuning back into my presentation for January 26, 2019. Today's video is going to be a special coverage on Winter Storm Jaden that has just recently been named a few hours ago. And I'm going to break it down, the totals, the timing, and also how hard it will hit your area. So as always, please consider clicking the subscribe button and also ringing that notification bell. So let's get right into it here. So this is the gem model. These are the 2 meter temperature contours. This looks confusing. I thought it was, but it's really very simple. So what this is saying is if you see this purple dotted line, that's your 32 degree line. Okay, this is 5 days from now. This is behind when the storm jaded. I'm going to show you how cold it's going to get in the east. Okay, so if basically if you're north of that purple dotted line, your temperatures are going to be below 32 degrees. Fahrenheit. That's all that is. And like, for example, like if you see this blue line that says zero here, you see this right here, then that's very cold. You're north of that line, okay, your temperatures are going to be less than zero. It's very simple. Okay, so it's not too hard to explain. I'm actually going to take it back to right now. So you can kind of see that 32 degree line, it, it will dip down into potentially like northern Florida. Okay, so where it is right now, you see it's going to go up to the north. Okay, so where it's going to be in southern southern Georgia, more like southern Alabama, southern Mississippi, that's where your freezing line is. Okay, so this is nothing to mess around with. Uh, mess around with. And this was actually made at 12Z, so actually, really, this is, this is right now. There we go. So this is actually like right now. Okay, so you can kind of see that 32 degree line, how it's kind of moved north, but then the cold air will settle in as we head through the nighttime hours, as you can see. And you can see the 32 degree line moves back down into southern Alabama and southern Georgia. But I know you want to see the radar, so that's what I'm going to show you now. Since we are far, like, closer to when the storm is actually going to hit, I can show you a lot more model runs. For example, here is the high resolution model. And I'm going to zoom in on the northern central U.S. And I'm going to use weathermodels.com. I love using that website. It has a lot of models. It even gives you the Euro model, which which sometimes you have to pay for. But sometimes you can get the free version. I will be showing you that next. So I have to receive some models here. So here's the high, high resolution model. There will be a storm that a little this clipper disturbance. Pressure of around 1014 millibars that's going to push through to the north through around like say Erie, Pennsylvania, Syracuse, New York, up in northern New England, maybe like one to four inch, inches of snow, nothing too major, but what comes behind that can be major. Okay, so here's the high resolution model, and you can see there's that little, that little area of snow, I don't even want to call it a clipper, but it's just a little area of snow that's going to continue to push off to the north and east, and you can see behind that, here is Winter Storm Jaden, waiting in the wings right here. And surprisingly enough, and I was pretty surprised by this, there could even be some ice and rain mixed in if you live in western North Dakota. Which I found that pretty shocking, because there will be some warm air drawn into this. And you can see by about, let's say this is around the afternoon. So by Sunday afternoon, western Minnesota will start to get on the action. And I will also get the snow totals. And you can even see eastern South Dakota a little bit more moderate snowfall. And there will be, like I said, it only takes one snow band, okay? About Winter Storm G, I was like, be careful. You get under one snow band, your tools will go up. And, in fact, it did. Now, for a come, like, these storms are usually moisture-starved. But if you look, 988, that's not too shabby. That is a pretty strong storm, okay, for just coming out of, just being an Alberta clipper. Okay, it's like tropical storm, almost hurricane strength. And the winds will be very fierce, and I'm actually going to show you that as well. Very fierce. So here is our 20 you can see the snow making its way towards Minneapolis now. I'm actually going to show you the wind for that time period, for that exact hour, hour 20. So if we look, oops, sorry, wrong one. So we're actually going to 850 millibar winds. And you can see the winds could be very significant. If you're on the back side of that storm, okay, we could be talking winds. Now these are in knots, okay, this is not miles per hour. Okay, so you can see in this central western North Dakota, northern South Dakota, has the potential to see winds of 52 to 58 knots, which I believe that is around 70 mile an hour, but that's peak gusts. 
Okay, uh, I believe these are not surface winds. These are a little bit higher in the atmosphere, but still. And you can still see, drawn from the south, you get a nice southerly flow. You can see some tropical storm force winds. Not saying this is a tropical storm, but tropical storm force winds out ahead of the system. And as it starts to deepen in strength a little bit, okay, we're going to start to see a little bit of specks of purple. That's your hurricane force winds. And these could certainly be some wind gusts. You can see the the wind entourage, montage, whatever you want to call it behind it. And it will continue as it pushes off to the east. You could see some dangerous winds, potentially. So, and you can just see the motion of the winds. Okay, now most of the winds are going to, most of the widespread winds are going to be on the back side of the storm. But the strongest wind is going to be a small area out ahead of the storm. But if we're talking about coverage, most of the winds going to be on the back side of the storm. But we could see some strong winds out ahead of it as well. So, with that, please be careful. Okay, I, I will show you the snowfall accumulations according to the HRR model. And as we can see, three, four, five inches. And I don't know if I actually have the whole loop. So, if you go to radar, okay, and you go to hour 35. So, it's snow still snowing across these areas. So, you tack on about another inch to these totals if you live in around Michigan. Or you tack on another one or two inches, and that will be your snow total because it's not quite done snowing because it only goes out about 35 hours so but you can see a nice good four to three to six inches possibly from eastern north dakota down to about western michigan and that is about i would agree with that okay maybe but i think the totals will be higher okay i think they could get as much as six to eight inches of snow as well now i'm gonna go to the rgem model because the canadian models are good around this area and you can kind of see where the snow totals the f the deeper colors of five six seven inches is more pinned towards the south so areas of five to seven inches and once you get north of that it's only about two or three nothing too major there but again it all depends on the time on the time if you get caught a morning rush that's not good news or any evening rush that is not good news okay I remember when I was in school last year I had a storm that brought about one to three inches of snow but it was right on the morning rush and school was actually canceled because of it. So, as I mean, it, don't be fooled by the snow totals because it all depends on the time as well. So you can see here is the HRDPS. I just showed you the RGEM. This is another Canadian model here. And you can see kind of telling the same thing, maybe a little bit more, four to eight inches. And I know if you notice in western South Dakota, there's that little bullseye that's always there. Okay, that is because there's a mountainous area in western South Dakota. That's about six inches there. Okay, that's a that's a hilly mountainous area, particularly in South Dakota. It always catches my eye, if in case it went any, that it caught anyone's eye. So we're gonna look at temperatures now. Here's weathermodels.com. Here's the year model, two meter temperature anomalies, and I'm also gonna show you the two meter temperatures, actual temperatures. And you can see I'm just gonna pan out to the whole United States here. Long 95 quarter, 20 degrees below above average. Actually, I forgot this is actually old. So this is that I was actually two days ago. This is right now. Okay, and what we can see is temperatures are 30 to 35 degrees below average. Eastern Iowa, northern central Illinois. Okay, that cold is that kind of cold is nothing to mess around with. Okay, and if you actually want to see it bigger, I can do that as well. There we go. That's that looks better. So again, if you pull it up, 30, 35 degrees below average, and much of the southeast is greater than 10 degrees below average as well, and much of the country is actually below average. This whole area. Okay, and maybe the west is a little bit warmer, but this is what you want to see. If you're a snow lover in the east, you want to see that warm air trying to sneak in on the west. That way you get some nice ridging. Okay, February could be very active potentially. And no places in the east haven't seen much snow. Some places, especially the mid-Atlantic, don't, don't give up just yet. Okay, there still could be a chance for a big storm to, to roll through the area. we got February and March still to go. So if we keep rolling here, the time loop, okay, we go through right around, let's go to 168, right there, One, 174, this is where I want to stop, okay, because this is where a temperature could just absolutely, just brutal, look at this, this is absolutely insane, we're talking about like, frostbite can occur in under 10 minutes kind of cold. 40 to 50 degrees below average is the potential. 
Okay, so something like 40 to 50 degrees. Don't even want to be out in that kind of weather. 40 to 50 degrees below average. Not the actual temperature, below average. Okay, and it's already cold enough there. Okay, so this is not what we need. That is absolutely just frigid. Like, I don't even know. Like, I couldn't even name you. And I've been doing weather for a few years. Okay, maybe even a little bit longer than that. And I even remember a time seeing this kind of cold on a map like this. So this is just how significant that is. Okay, and I will get to the actual temperatures too. If we go over to the actual temperatures, on hour 174, which is the same hour that I just showed you that said 50 degrees below average. Pull up the actual temperatures. Here they are. Okay, we're talking about these magentas tucked in inside that area of teal. We're talking about 25, to even 35 below zero, which is absolutely like insane. And I have seen it colder than that, but that's absolutely insane. Okay, it's tucked in there from about central Iowa over to Minneapolis, so about Des Moines and Minneapolis, Pierre, South Dakota, Bismarck, North Dakota. So a place that could certainly be negative 20 degrees or lower. Okay, so please do not go outside at all. I won't even say if you have to, unless someone has to go to the hospital, okay, do not even go outside. It's just nothing to play around in. And you can see the the most the lowest temperature here is negative 41.6, which is probably tucked away somewhere up there in Canada. But still, not too far away here. Okay, and the highest temperature is 92 degrees, so that's probably somewhere in the south. And you can kind of see the comparison, the lowest temperature and the highest temperature. So that's pretty impressive. That is, like, unbelievable cold. If we flip back over to anomalies, I mean, keep going, this goes out about 10 days. You see the cold still hanging on, and it's, I'm going to stop at hour 216, and I'm going to show you as it continues to press its way onto the east. Okay, but look at the west, starting to really warm up here. 10 to 20 degrees above average temperatures, even San Francisco there, western North Dakota, even the Dakotas starting to warm back up. We're talking about 20 degrees below, uh, above average, excuse me, in western North Dakota. Eastern North Dakota is still a few degrees above average. We still got to get the groove on there, but you can see when the central plains and the west warms up like that, that cold has nowhere to go but east. So we're still talking about negative 30, negative 40, so 30, 40 degrees below average temperatures. And if you are in that area of green, that means you're at least 8 to 10 degrees below average temperatures so that is still very cold and even for a place like Philadelphia still 20 degrees below average okay so still very cold still very cold temperatures and by the time we had to hour 240 the cold is kind of continuing to exit out we start to see it retreating a little bit the warm air is kind of pushing out of the way okay you can see the warm air finally comes back hot oh, doesn't it feel so nice I'm actually going to show you the, the actual temperatures next so you can see much of the much of the country, much of the central and western part of the country, anywhere from five to thirty degrees above average, but the east is still dealing with ten to ten to thirty degrees below average temperatures. So extreme cold, extreme warmth, folks. It really depends on where you live. So if hour two forty it looks to be pleasant, well, what are, what are the actual temperatures? Let's, there it is, hour two forty. I'm actually going to show you the temperatures, so you can see. It is better than before. Okay, so you see those areas of darker red and purple. Okay, across the northeast. That's about 5 to 15 degrees right here. But if you see that area of lighter red. Okay, you start to set up from eastern South Dakota, central North Dakota. That is about 20 to 30. So temperatures are still below freezing. But just note that they are above average, so it is improving. But I don't think it's ever going to get up above freezing anytime soon. It's going to have to wait a while. So the Arctic oscillations here, this is one of the reasons why it's been so cold. Through the next, or at least through maybe even mid-February potentially. Okay, maybe like the first or second week of February, we could stay in the negatives for the Arctic oscillations. Pacific North American patterns and North Atlantic oscillations are above the zero line, which North Atlantic oscillations that is not good, but for the Pacific North American pattern, that is good. So, to finish off my video here, folks, we're going to show you the GDPS. This is another Canadian model that was not available on Chocolate Tippets, which is why I have it on Pivotal Weather, if you know what I mean, if you're familiar with this website. So, 
And you can see, here's the first low pressure system, the one out ahead of Jaden, that is relatively weak. Pressure of 10, 12 millibars, and it's got the area of snow right in there. Just going to continue to push up to the north and east. Like I said, a couple inches of snow for northeast and New England, not too much. And then here comes Jaden. Here it is. And you got some snow on the eastern side, some rain and ice on the central and western side of that storm. As it continues to push on, push its way onto the east. Okay, and it starts to push on the I-95 quarter, which according to this model, which only does zero and 12Z runs, it does not do 18Z runs or 6Z runs. But you can kind of see it could remain all snow for parts of the 95 quarter, according to the Canadian model. They are better with managing northern areas. And maybe even another, as we head into the first week of February, potentially another coastal storm with some light snow in the Appalachian Mountains. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed my presentation for today, January 26, 2019. Thank you to all the people who, are, who are, work very hard for us out there. Thank you for fighting for us. Thank you for watching my video today. I really do appreciate it. I am the Weather Dude, signing off. Till next time.